Awesome. So we've now hit the official beginning time, sort of give people an extra five minutes to stumble in, and, uh, and then we'll begin this thing for real at like five after the hour. Good. So does the, the ready talk, does the audio as well? It should. I may not have done the right settings at that up, so I'm going to review that for tomorrow's session. So today, like, the phone is the only way people are coming in. Let me just actually in this five minutes pop into the back and see if there's anything that I can do about that. Yeah, yeah, there's a little option here. Like, like, it looks ahead. like it's only my, uh, myself and you in the audio window. Oh, someone just joins maybe. Yeah, I think so. Morning, Eli. Excellent. Good to have you here. Is this Harry? Yes, it is. Fabulous. Fabulous. I'm glad you're here with us. I don't get any audio through the computer, so that's why I switched to the phone. Thank you. Yeah, I'm just looking at the back-end settings right now on that Ready Talk of why... Ah, maybe this option include streaming broadcast audio. Maybe let's just turn that on and say yes. Let's just say those are also things that are already true. Um, maybe that's what that setting meant. Just click all the audio things and see what happens. All right. It may because this meeting has started. I may not be able to change that setting. Um, I'll definitely do that then for the tomorrow setting. Ah, sure. Always learning things. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, let's try this for the Thursday. Turn on all the audio things. Yes. All those numbers. All right. I felt so cocky. I'm like, I totally understand ready to talk. I'm like, apparently I did not understand this online deal option thing after all. <laughs> Happens to everyone. I've done it many times. Let's add the dial-in info for everyone here. And then we'll start this thing up. Hmm. Good morning. Excellent. Good to have you here. So it looks like we have all of us for the moment. So uh, yeah, let's start in this one and. Uh, and we'll have the actual computer audio working for tomorrow when we do this all again. Hooray! <laughs> well, good morning, good morning. Let me actually fire up some fancy slides. Um, see if this thing works. Share. Sure. Hmm. Sounds good. Putting on a slide. Hi there, so uh, welcome to uh, the Office 365 workshop info session. Um, looks like we've got so far Harry and Birgit, who are both actually very technically adept, so uh, we do not need to you know, hold their hands much on this. It's mostly a, a chance for them to learn a little bit more our goals for this session. Do anyone else on the phone with us today?
Cool. Well, I'm glad to have you here. So my name is Eli. You know me. I'm the Net Squared guy. Um, and with us, I've also got Ben Williams from Tech Impact. Want to say hello? Hi, everyone. Yeah, it's really great. He's actually done the real technical heavy lifting for this whole session um, and all the 365 training because I'm out of my depth here. Um, you know, but I was able to help out with sort of the, some of the workshop materials. So basically, our goal here for this next little one-hour webinar is for me to say hello, hello, done that, then for us to do a quick overview of what is Office 365. Um, and because the two of you have got pretty good technical knowledge, um, feel free to you know break in and sort of ask Ben a couple of other questions as you go along. And then I'm going to go into a little bit about the goals and the flow of the workshop, because it's a pretty small, focused piece of what is the overall Office 365. And then we'll have sort of Q&A. Um, but again, because we've got a small group, feel free to bring in at any time and, uh, and ask other questions as we go along. But, uh, but what I'd love to do is just start off with Ben, who can do the high level, what is Office 365? And what is the process we'll be exploring today with a real focus on the exchange online part of Office 65? So um, basically, I'm going to get out of the way, and Ben's going to start doing some screen sharing and uh, you know, drop some knowledge, as the youngs would say. <laughs> All right. Um, so I guess I'll just start off with a brief overview of Office 365 as a whole. Um, it is a very large system, so to speak. Um, so the main components of Office 365 are really Exchange Online, which is your email, calendar, um, notes, stuff like that. Um, there is SharePoint Online, which also sort of includes OneDrive for Business. Um, that's for file storage in the cloud as well as collaboration on files. Um, managing workflow, dispersing information throughout your organization. Um, those take up a pretty big part of Office 365. Um, it also comes with Skype for Business, um, also known as, formerly known as Link, which is uh, the instant messaging tool um, and can also be used for meetings such as this one actually. So you could, you could do screen sharing, audio, video, Called through Skype for Business. Um, Yammer and or Newsfeed is a component that's sort of an internal social networking tool um, that you know, encourages engagement with your, your coworkers and actually is also a pretty good collaboration platform as well. There's a lot of built-in tools within um, Yammer to collaborate on files with your team or on, on projects. Um, so that's a really cool component as well. Mainly what we're going to be focusing on though with these workshops of course is Exchange Online and how to get um, actually set up using Exchange Online, get set up with having email accounts for your organization, um, having people be able to share their calendars um, and bring all of their old email over from what, whatever platforms they were using before. Um, so really, to get started, um, I'm gonna we're gonna do a quick screen share. I'm gonna show you sort of, you know, the very very beginning of getting signed up for Office 365 and really like where um, you're gonna start off with that. So Office 365, you can very easily just Google it. It'll bring you right to their comparison of the different plans that they have. So there's a lot of different um, options in terms of what kind of plan you want to use for Office 365. We are focusing on nonprofits. So those are going to be tucked away under see more plans and pricing. Um, here we go. So Office 365 Enterprise E3 is right here. Where is nonprofit? That's the one we want. So the Office 365 Nonprofit E3 offers a free trial 
Um, and so this is how you are going to be able to get started and get set up within Office 365 um, without having to pay for anything. So you are going to get started with the free trial. You will verify your domain name that you would like to use for your email addresses um, via a pretty intricate process of adding some, some records to your DNS provider. Um, You'll then, you know, you'll create your first email account, which will be, you know, whoever is getting this free trial set up. That'll be the first email account that's in the organization. They'll then be able to um, actually sign up for these and acquire these Office 365 nonprofit E1 licenses. Now, this is really what makes this a really, really viable solution for nonprofits in. Um, making sure that they are managing their expenses and getting as much amazing productivity as they can out of the service. The E1 licenses are completely free for nonprofits. So once you have your trial set up, you can actually get as many of these E1 licenses as you need for the amount of users that you are going to be setting up email uh, accounts for. Um, and so that's really the biggest that's the linchpin for why Office 265 is such a great service for nonprofits because once that trial ends for the E3 licenses, which admittedly the E3 licenses do get you a little more in terms of features, however, they're not uh, they're not essential in terms of um, it's stuff like encryption for your email, some compliance things for like government entities if you're a nonprofit who's associated with a government entity. Um, so you, you're really not losing out a whole lot by not paying for your licenses. You still get SharePoint. You still get OneDrive. Um, you have your Skype for Business. You get all of the Exchange Online tools. So the, the E1 licenses are, are really all that you need. And then once that trial for the E3 ends, um, you just keep on going with the E1. Your email address will have your domain name. Um, you'll be able to share calendars within your organization, uh, have things like shared mailboxes, distribution groups, all of the great things that come with a normal Exchange server, except it's online, so it's cloud-based. So you can access your email from anywhere. You can access your files from anywhere. It's really um, a really great solution because you don't have to worry about maintaining a server. You don't have to worry about running out of space really ever. Um, everyone gets 50 gigabyte mailboxes, um, which will probably be getting increased in the next couple of years. With OneDrive for Business, you have unlimited storage. So it's really a, a fantastic solution um, all around. It really covers all of the bases that you need. Um, so I'm going to dive in a little bit to actually what you're going to be working with once you have your Office 365 set up. This is our internal Office 365. This is Tech Impact Office 365. I have a custom theme up at the top here. Everyone will be able to do you know, kind of their own stuff with that. Um, so it's very customizable. These are all of the apps that I personally have access to. Um, most normal end users are going to have their mail, their calendar, their people, um, Yammer will either be Yammer or Newsfeed. It's if you have to activate Yammer. Um, OneDrive is here. Sites is SharePoint. Uh, they'll also have Cast, Dell, Video, and all of the Office Online apps. Um, and that's actually a, another really amazing thing about Office 365. You don't actually have to purchase Office for your organization. So if you don't already have um, your local Office program, You'll be able to work with these online apps with any documents that you that you create or need to work on. Um, you'll be able to collaborate on documents with these online apps with your coworkers. Um, it's really it, it's the most cost-effective solution for nonprofits in that way as well. Um, with the E3 licenses, if you do for some reason need to buy those, those come with a um, a free install of Office, so you can install it up to up on up to five devices. Office Professional Pro Plus. Uh, so that's uh, one of the other benefits of the E3. But with the E1, you have all of your online Office apps, so you'll really be able to to get 
anything you need to get done done. Um, it's a pretty friendly interface overall. There's a little app drawer up here so you can always get to what you need. You can pin apps up at the top here so your most used apps can go up here. Um, just to take a look at Outlook in the web, also known as Outlook Web Access or the Outlook Web App. Um, it's going to be very familiar to a lot of people who use you know, an online based um, email solution. Got your folders on the left here. Um, you can have different accounts in here. So if you are part of a shared mailbox, it will show up here. Um, there's also a groups area. So groups are a really awesome tool. They allow you to have one centralized uh, conversation location. Um, so you would have like conversations with everyone who is a part of that group within here. Um, you can have a calendar for the group, uh, shared file space for that group. So that's a, a really great solution as well for collaboration. Um, there's tons of tools for actually working with email. You can mark things as spam, still of course, junk, um, archive them, move them to different folders. Um, there's actually now something called sweeps so that if you are getting a ton of emails in and they're not emails you want from or you don't like the person who's sending them and don't want to see those emails anymore, you can set up a sweep rule to delete all messages in the folder from that sender and any future messages or to always keep them if they're um, really important. So there's a lot of great tools here. Um, you have your message list in the middle. You can read your messages here. When you go to reply, it keeps everything in line so you can reference the other uh, messages in that conversation. There's emojis, which is super important, obviously. Um, <laughs> got your normal text editing stuff. Uh, you can put tables in emails, do bullet lists, um, strike throughs, all kinds of crazy stuff, insert images. Um, you can attach files that are in your OneDrive. Right now it's not working for the recent, but you can see here I have all of my files from my OneDrive for Business available to me to attach to emails. Um, there's also this group files, so if you do use groups, any files that are in your groups, you'll be able to attach to emails from here super easily. And you can of course always browse your actual local computer for any files. Um, so there's a lot of great sort of meshing there. They try to mesh all of their services together so that you can get to what you need from really wherever you are. Um, there's all kinds of like add-on apps that you can get from the Office uh, 365 store. Um, so it's really just all around a really good solution. This is what most people will be working with every day, but you can of course um, also have your local Outlook client configured. And the nice thing is that any settings and anything that you are doing in either of the online or the local Outlook um, will be replicated across both platforms because it's a cloud um, service. So you don't have to worry about deleting an email out of Outlook and it's still being there in the web app, um, all of that great stuff. Uh, you'll also be able to, just to give you an idea of calendars too, calendars in the web app are really pretty. Um, they've added these really like bold colors. Um, and you can, let me pull up some more, we'll look at the HD mm -hmm. phone queue. Um, you can view other people's calendars on top of yours to see when you have time free. Um, so if I want to look at my coworker Ebony's calendar, I can do that and see what she's working on uh, right now. So she is in a weekly project management meeting right now. Um, so there's a lot of cool things you can do with the calendar as well. Um, when you're creating events, you can actually put Skype for Business meetings within the event, sort of like uh, with this. Ready Talk meeting where it just has the link in there and you just go right to the meeting. Um, so they 
really the main point that I want to get across is that they really have covered all their bases. Um, anything that you really would need to be able to do to get your work done, um, you can get done with Office 365. Um, and the process of getting signed up is relatively easy. Um, you really just need an outside email address um, and you would create a dot on Microsoft.com domain. Um, so you would have already a domain for your email that is related to your org and then you can also, like I said, register your actual domain with Office 265. Um, and moving mail is really the, the migration itself is usually the hardest part. Um, some people may lose some email. It's very possible. However, nine times out of ten you're going to be totally fine. You'll bring everything over. There's a lot of great tools, um, automated tools to migrate mail as well as being able to do it manually. And the manual migration is, is really easy, all things considered. Um, once, you, once you get it down and once you go through our, our workshop, our awesome workshop that Eli is setting up. So, um, I don't know. I think that's probably it. Eli, was there anything else that you wanted me to sort of touch that's, on? That's super helpful. I'm going to talk a little bit through the workshop, and then it may be helpful if, if we have time to maybe even walk through some of like, okay, where, what does the application process look like? Like, yeah. what are some of the key things we may need to look at through the way? And we'll be guided a little bit by your questions. Um, so what do you guys think? Uh, Birgit, Harry, do you have that? Sort of, you know, any other deep questions right now about like, what is this crazy Office 365 thing? No, I thought it was a good discussion, but I think uh, there's some fine points we'll bring out after the next session. Cool, that sounds good. And yeah, there's definitely, as you say, we can go very deep into the fine points. But part of the goal of this workshop is to create a pretty light and easy uh, process, and I'll walk you through what that could look like. So let me just uh, fire up the screen sharing and I'll continue on to the next part of this. And let me see, click, 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 conference controls, there they are, I'm in full screen, which is why everything is confusing. Boom. All right, here it comes, coming at you. So Office 365 does a million trillion things, um, but here's where I want to take us through this. So I want to basically walk us through the workshop goal and audience, and then as you, we'll come back and get into like that detail part of things. So uh, Office 365, our goal within this is to do a very small piece within the overall suite which is essentially we want to take a couple of very small nonprofits and get them set up with from the initial application to the point where they are now using hosted email within Office 365. And so our goal is to find about five local nonprofits um, who are currently not using hosted email. They're using something like Gmail or Yahoo or something like that and get them to through the process of the application for Office 365, the process of claiming ownership of that domain name that they own or will need to buy as part of the workshop process, and then actually setting up the MX record so the mail sort of flows magically through Office 365. And then we'll hold their hands through the initial creation of their email accounts within 365. Um, and then we'll take them through Office, like. A, Outlook Online, which is what Ben just showed us, and we'll configure their desktop emails. And if there's time, we'll work through some of the migration of, of their email. Um, again, that's all documented out in the book that Ben put together. And, and it's actually for people who we're going to be working with should be relatively uncomplex because, because they usually have like a single email account. Um, we're not working with organizations who've got like deep legacy email systems. So you that's kind of right. – go ahead. Two points with number two. Yeah. I think Ben could remember the older days when 365 came out a couple of years ago. 
that it took upwards of 72 hours to get the TXT and MX records transferred. Those have gotten a lot better. But yeah. with 12 different registers out there, you typically still have to go through their help desk to go through the process, even though the last several ones I did through GoDaddy, it's been automated on the 365 side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so a lot of um, registrars do have um, like a hosted DNS yeah. in so the web. My, my point is rather than try to oversell to the nonprofits when you walk in the door, you're going to sit down and do all this in one meeting. It isn't going to happen. It's going to be a, a process. And I think Ben could agree with that. It takes more than one discussion just to get all the information you need to make this transformation. So that you raise a good point there. And so part of what we built into the flow of this is, is that there's actually a pre-interview process with each one of the participants where we're going to ask you to go through a checklist to make sure that they have all of the necessary records and potentially to do the first step of some of these process, you know, to basically say like, okay, actually I over the phone right here can do the first steps of your application process with you so that way we can get as far ahead as we can when people come into the same room. And because you're totally right, some people are going to run up into a barrier. Um, and so it may also be wise to say, let's maybe organize a quick follow-up phone call or session say the weekend after the workshop to follow up with any questions. But my hope is that with the pre interview, we should be able to get most people completed in in this very small way as opposed to a full migration on day one. But yeah, thank you for that point, because you're right, there is obviously a lot of different setups we're working within. So part of why we think this is going to be doable in a smaller way is the participants we're going to work with are going to be atypical nonprofits, or rather, they're going to be the most typical nonprofits, but the people who never get any support because they are super small organizations. Our goal is to be working with organizations that are probably under 10 staff, and most that I've worked with are under five. Usually they're a one or two person shop or may even be completely volunteer run and have a budget that is well under a million dollars. And so those are the people who may well own a domain name set on like a WordPress site, but never quite figured out like how would I get hosted email. So they're still using a Gmail or Hotmail address. And I'm sure lots of you have also run into those very small startup nonprofits who don't have a lot of technical ability in-house. And so with those participants, if they already own a domain name, then all we need to do is make sure that they actually have full access to the administration console for that. And some may not actually have a domain name yet, in which case part of the process in the pre-interview is to make sure that they've set a, they actually have decided on a domain name and actually go through and purchase that. The other thing, of course, is they need to be a nonprofit or charity that is eligible for Microsoft donations. Thankfully, Microsoft is very broad in who they allow donations to, including churches, nonprofits, charities. Um, but essentially, those you know what that process is going to look like will be different in every country. Um, the Office 365 for Nonprofits page actually has a whole eligibility section, which will confirm all of that. But the easiest way to do that, and what needs to happen through this process, is if the nonprofit is registered and verified within TechSoup, that's basically how the verification process is going to happen. So, so part of the pre-interview is to make sure that the nonprofit is registered with TechSoup be, with their free account, because once they've gone through that verification process, then it's pretty much automatic when they actually do their application to 365. That verification happens very quickly. And of course, the other things are the participants should be able to bring a laptop to the workshop because this will be very hands-on. So it's, from my mind, those are the core pieces around who we want to work with in this. So they have a less complex migration because they're typically only looking at one email account. Um, for those who have helped other nonprofits, 
given this audience profile, do you think there's any other things we should be looking for? So, yeah, Ben, do you want to just talk about maybe some of the issues you may have encountered through this migration, especially around making sure people have access to their domain name registrar? Um, yeah, so most of the time people who, at least who Tech Impact has, has worked with on doing migrations for email, um, they do know their, who their registrar is, um, and they at least know they have login information um, to that domain registrar admin console, um, which has enabled, I mean, has enabled us to be able to just go in and make the changes for them should they not be you know, the ones who set up their domain, the ones who manage the, their domain and their DNS records. Um, so certainly as long as they have, we have that login information, um, we can walk them through getting the, the record data that they needed. Um, that's usually one of the, the biggest bottlenecks is just that people don't feel comfortable getting the, the records added to their DNS to make sure that their, their email is coming through where it needs to be. Um, I think really the only other time that we experience um, bottlenecks and frustration and difficulty is during the, the migration itself. Um, and when we're actually moving old email over. But again, as Eli was saying, we're going to be focusing on people who probably aren't going to really have a whole lot of email to move over, if any at all. Um, so that should be certainly a lot easier um, through this workshop, I would think. Cool. That's helpful. And from my experience having done a test workshop here in Vancouver, my experience really was, uh, one, Office 365 actually had a really good step-by-step -step process for each, like for the MX and TXT records for like the top 10 most popular domain name registrars. So for GoDaddy, for Hover.com, basically it, it has like a nice graphic guide, like go exactly here and do these things. So that was actually quite nice. Um, the one bottleneck I ran into is people knew who their domain registrar were, but when they actually showed up, they didn't have the right password. So one step I've added to the pre-checklist is actually to go in and do a test login. So to get on the phone with these people and say, all right, I want you to log in right now or send me that password and I'm going to log in on your behalf and make sure we actually can get in before we show up at the workshop. Uh, Eli, these yep. registers are really um, interesting because not only do you have to have passwords, a lot of times you have to have a PIN to the account. Mm -hmm. So it gets a little bit more complicated. So what I, would, I think that's part of the value of doing the pre-test because that uh -huh. way you get to work out some of that stuff instead of having people get stuck on the day of. I'm sure. But yeah, go ahead. As a Microsoft partner, what we've been able to do is automate the process. So if you went to my website, and you sign up for 365, whatever domain you picked, it would have a .onmicrosoft.com, and you'd have a website in the process available. Maybe that's what TechSoup should look at. That way TechSoup could verify the, um, the charitable part of it since you're typically the organization that does that, and that could get somebody online essentially within an hour. Yeah, I think actually that's really what the trial process does. It does exactly that. It does that your organization dash on Microsoft. Um, and so our goal, though, is obviously is to have people at that phase, and then the, once the verification is done, then they are going to have access to a, a permanent hosted email solution at no cost. So that's sort of the phase uh, of it. But what you've described is sort of step one of the trial. That doesn't exist anymore. There is no free website because as of January... Oh, sorry, an actual website component. That may well be the case. Um, ben, can you speak to that particular component or lack thereof within Office 365? Um, so nine times out of ten, everyone who we work with has a domain um, that they register 
with Office 365. Um, the, there is through SharePoint, there is a public website that you can set up if you don't already have one. Um, it's not going to be very robust or dynamic or um, like it's it's a very very pared down website building process and um, so you're you're gonna have some it, it's almost nine times out of ten more worth the <coughs> excuse me the cost to get an actual domain and an actual website um, rather than using the the public website portion of SharePoint. Um, However, certainly it, it's actually not possible for them to, to purchase that domain um, and purchase a, a website that, that they would be hosting. The public website through SharePoint is a very viable option. It will allow them to have an um, outward facing face to the Internet um, that people would be able to find their contact information. They would have their, be able to have their mission on all of that basic um, information. Uh, that they would want to really put out there on the web. Um, so there, there technically is a viable way to not pay a dime to have a website and hosted email um, and you know, be able to collaborate on, on things that you need to collaborate on uh, through, through Office 365 as a platform. Again, right. people are probably going to want to actually you know, spend a little bit of, uh, of money to get that an actual domain so they don't have the dot on Microsoft.com. But um, it is possible to, to exist strictly with that dot on Microsoft.com domain name. Eli, based on what Microsoft said back in January, it's a great period for two years. It goes away. So right now there's two vendors, GoDaddy and Wix, who are helping anybody who gets a new 365 installation to help them with a public website. Right. So it's, it's good to know there's some options there. But yeah, I think for the focus of this particular workshop, we're going to work on the hosted email because my experience has been most of the organizations I've run into who fit the profile we're working with tend to have their own website already. They actually lead with that public-facing website well before they've ever figured out hosted email just because oh. it's sort of the first thing so many small organizations are doing now. Yep, I, I agree with you, but the public website is not going to be a free option in the calendar year, so it's bad to try to sell it that this is a giveaway. The exchange is really the blood and guts of 365. Yeah, uh, that's been my feeling as well, which is why when we were deciding how to focus this workshop, that was the part we wanted to focus on because it, it solves actually quite a large problem, and also it's available <laughs> as a side bonus in – like you know, almost every country in the world, which is quite a unique offering from Microsoft in that I can go to people in East Africa or Latin America and say, here's a great solution to your problem. So I just want to talk about basically what we've created to support you through the process of putting together a workshop. So the hard, heavy work was Ben's work. <coughs> he put together this technical guide walking people through the setup of Office 365. It's a printable document, and there's a version both for you as a trainer and a version for the participants. And it takes people from every step from which of the options should you choose when you are actually applying online for Office 365, and then takes you through all the steps there from Eli, cut out. Interesting. Okay, I can totally hear you. I'm, am I back now? Yep. Awesome. Sorry about that. No worries. Thanks for letting me know. <laughs> so basically, I was throwing a lot of praise at Ben for his great guide, which is going to walk you through all the technical steps, taking you from the initial application through to the verification of domain ownership, all the MX record madness, and then through to the configuration of, of the email clients uh, so you can actually run through this whole process. And then he's also provided some additional guides so when people want to explore the other features of Office 365 or start creating more email accounts for people in their organization or for other volunteers, he's also got a great guide that 
administrators can take back with them into their organizations to continue using Office 365. Ben, did I sort of capture what you created? Hi there, friends. Are we having some audio madness again? I believe so. Oh, I can hear you. Okay, great. So, Ben, my question was, did I capture most of what you created in the guides? Yeah, uh, definitely. Awesome. Good. I'm glad to hear that. And then, so, what I did is do the kind of things that I do all day, which is create sort of some step-by-step -step event help. So, I've created this... Uh, this event, this sort of a Git book guide, and this takes you through all the steps of holding the workshop. And so I've included cut and paste things like a template for your meetup invitation and the application form, as well as some promotional emails that you can use to help generate like attendees at your event. I've also put together the checklist you'll need as you sort of look for your venue and sort of set up all of that, um, as well as that pre-workshop interview that you'll want to do with each participant to make sure that they've got full access to their domain name registrar and, uh, and that they are sort of set up to succeed when they show up at the event. There's a, a spreadsheet that actually Ben put together and I adapted that sort of helps people like say, how many email addresses do I have? How many user accounts do I have? What's like basically gives them a good lay of the land to help with any migration that's going to happen. And then, of course, there is a bit of financial support just to help cover your event costs or bring in snacks for the event. So uh, through a Microsoft grant, there's a $250 honorarium for uh, each workshop trainer to administer to use however they best need to to pull off the event. So some people are using that to make sure they've got a good internet connection at their event. Other people are using that to like print off posters and do some promotional work. I trust you to use that as you best need to. But that is really the high level piece of, uh, of how we're going to support you. Um, I encourage you to click through the guides um, they're relatively short and readable, and, uh, and sort of figure out if you got all the details there, and if there are some holes, let me know because I'm continuing to build out the Train the Trainer guide. And then a couple other just technical things before I wrap up my piece here, which is the workshop should be completed by the end of this year, of 2015, because that's sort of the grant window we're working within. Um, typically, I'm going to distribute the funds after the workshop, the honorarium, but talk to me if you need something a little bit sooner. Um, and then be, there is a sort of an intake survey that link that I'll be creating for each one if you want to ready to promote your event, um, basically because I need the email addresses of attendees for a post-workshop survey that's part of this whole project. Um, and then the last thing is currently we sort of set, set things up that there's one event per city. That's sort of the terms of the grant. If you have any questions around that, let me know. But that is the high level piece of all this. The only other warning I should give you from people who have started doing some of these test workshops in other countries is, uh, is I would recommend against downloading the Office uh, software via Office 365. Um, basically, they can request that same software through TechSoup for a better long-term price. Um, and really, no desktop software from Microsoft is needed to complete these workshops successfully because it's focused in, on the email. So you can actually do all of this right within the web browser, um, and, and that can actually, right within there, you can actually complete the whole steps of the workshop. So that's, that's my piece. Any other uh, burning questions on your side? Yeah. Hi, Ilay. Hi there, Birgit. I have, um, when you go back to one of your previous slides, I think it was the second or uh, fourth of 
first slide. It was on. Uh, there was a five-step kind of what's. All in right. One. How about this one? This one, Around right? It has under number five: configure Outlook for desktop and mobile. Yeah, that's um, again. That if they already have those, those that software. If they don't necessarily have that software, it's not a needed component of the flow. Right, I understood that. Okay. Um, but the uh, other question that I have is, so they can use it through the browser online, but is that website where they go in there also set up to, have a, um, to be accessed via a mobile browser? Yes. And how does that look like? Yeah, ben, do you want to take is, that? It is uh, able to be accessed on a mobile browser. There is a mobile version of Outlook Web Access. Um, so you can access it from your browser. There's also uh, actual apps for both Android and iPhone. Um, one of them is just called Outlook, and I prefer that one. Um, oh, that the other one. I use it every day. It's fabulous. I love, love, love the uh, the mobile iPhone app. It's yeah. actually like the it's best like you, app I've you ever don't used. Need a but you don't need an, uh, a license for that. You just kind of download nope. the app and access the, uh, the yeah. online version of it. Okay. Yep. Okay. So you just enter is in your Android email version? address and password, and it, it connects to Exchange Online. And with all of your email, you will access to your calendar, um, notes, stuff like that. Yep. Fabulous. And that's also available on Android, right? Yes. Yeah. That was my question. I had this confusion a little bit mm -hmm. that there's a mobile version and there is a desktop version, the mobile version is actually the apps and don't need a license for the desktop versions you need the license. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And yeah, that that's you should right. get text it. Yeah. Okay. Told. And so one other thing that actually I've had other people encounter is we've had a couple users in some of the early workshops who are like, love having access to this hosted email, but actually I really like using Gmail as as basically my client. Um, and so Gmail doesn't officially speak uh, Exchange, but you can actually set it up because you could go to Office 365, set your email account to just forward to whatever email you're currently using, and then just use Gmail's send as feature where you sort of pretend your, your hosted email address. Um, so you can actually sort of make almost anything work just because you can actually forward within Office 365 too. So it could even okay. just become your public facing yeah, thing. Thank Go ahead. Um, Very helpful. So you yes, can, thank you. You can actually also set up uh, your email account and email as an IMAP account. Um, it just wouldn't be exchanged. So you wouldn't have access to your calendar that way. Um, but you would still have access to your email. It wouldn't be like Pop, where when you delete it off of, or when you download it onto your phone, it's no longer on the server. Um, mm -hmm. So you you can actually also use the Gmail app to set up just set up the email account in there. Oh, cool. Um, yeah. yeah, I didn't understand that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Eli, earlier we said that you could use five devices in the E3 account. It's really five devices that are laptops, five devices that are tablets, and five devices which are phones. Any combination, Android, Windows, iPhone. That's the advantage of an E3 account. Yep. Right. And the, the great thing about the E3 is that it's still priced for nonprofits. So you're only paying $5 per user per month for the E3 licenses. So even even if you do need some of those features, like the the ability to install Office on on devices, um, you'll be able to do that at a at a very very relatively cheap price compared to other solutions. So actually, Ben, that's a good reminder um, around the application process is sometimes a little bit less clear than maybe it could be. Um, so when you show up. Uh, the, you know the page. I think I've just loaded that up here with the uh, the, the nonprofit plans. You'll see that basically there's two nonprofit specific plans. There's E1 and E3. And as we've talked about, these licenses are slightly different. But it sounds like, oh, in fact, in fact, they've clarified that. 
I can only click the E3 now. Okay. Well, yep. then ignore me. Um, they've just cleaned up the process. I used to be able to click E1 as well, which was always a terrible idea. So what people just need to understand about this, because it freaks them out a little bit, is on the E3, it says here, 450 per user per month. Um, but that's only for basically when you use the full E3-ness, which gives you the ability to download desktop versions of the software. If they never touch that particular feature set, basically they get to do this at no cost. And as we've said, the best idea is for them to go to TechSoup and get that desktop software that mm -hmm. way because at 450 a month, it's still going to add up quickly in a lot of user use cases. Although if you had an intern or other temporary staff, this might actually be a really good model. Um, but yeah, sorry, it looks like Microsoft actually just in the last two weeks cleaned up some of this to make it less confusing. Hooray! So that's, that's sort of the big pieces. I don't think we've got anything else to, uh, to unload on you today. So either you can sort of, you know, ask any other questions now in this final five minutes, or you can take some of your life back and leave a meeting early. It's not un unheard of. Um, I have one last question. Um, ben, would you be available for um, um, yeah, uh, a quick conference call if we run into trouble? I'm, I'm trying to go through the process, and I, I didn't get to that point yet where I actually was able to use the office online. Mm -hmm. uh, just because I ran out of town, but I have not seen, I clicked around the admin and I have not seen the place where I could actually use my email, but that could also have been part of the um, domain verification process. Um, would you be available for a phone call or um, if I got your email address to kind of coordinate that? Yeah, sure. Um, so my, my email address, are you ready for it? Yes. Uh, it's just Ben, B E N, at tech, T as in Thomas, E as in Echo, C as in Charlie, H as in Hotel, Impact, I as in Iguana, M as in More, P as in Paul, A as in Alpha, C as in Charlie, T as in Thomas, dot O R G. Okay. And if that bounces yeah, back, I'd be happy work, yeah. to forward that to you as well. Ben, yeah. remember to track these hours and bill it back to us because it's part of the project plan. Okay. Eli? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Could you share the screen for a minute? Yes, um, I can. Let me uh, get on that one moment. Oh, I think I could answer that question a little bit faster. Oh, so you are around the back end admin? So I actually don't have one of those fired up right now. Uh, ben, um, could maybe could you open, like show your backend admin console in Office 365 again? Because maybe yeah, you can sure. show Bear get that that app selection again, and uh, Harry might be able to walk us through that as well. Yeah. Um, so well, I don't have it uh, fired up either. So but, <laughs> that's okay. kind of but do you see the gear in the far upper right corner? Yeah. If Ben okay. hits that gear. He has the ability to go to the screen to download those software options. Yeah, so in Office 365 settings, I actually do have an E3 license too. Um, so, oh, wow, they changed this. Okay, that's yeah, nice. You did change it. <laughs> oh, there you see it, software. That's the other thing about Office 365. They're constantly pushing out updates um, to features and interface uh, like layout, so um, yeah. they're always working to improve things and make things a little more functional. Um, ben, can you, here. Yep. can you go down a little bit? You might have the option for the 2016. Yep. See it? So now you have the second option. Yeah, so, so you, you can download the 2013 apps, which are technically the current version still, but 2016 just came out, so you're able to install those as well. Um, and you'll be able to, I believe, upgrade if you already have 2013 and you get the E3 licenses, you can upgrade to 2016 for free. It'll take until about February, but could yeah. you also go to the tools on the left side where it says phone and tablet? 
Yep. That way yeah, they can so. see how different devices are listed and how that works. Yeah, this will link you to the various stores to download the Office applications for your, your smartphones um, and or tablets. Birgit, does that um, answer your question, or were you looking more well, for the, uh, the the web versions of those apps? I, I was looking for the web version, and I, I saw the install, and I'm, uh, I'm, I thought I was right that that would be actually the local install with the um, added um, kind of charges uh, after the trial period, but not the web version. And I didn't yeah. have that little, um, um, yeah, the. Uh, when I, I clicked on this little um, uh, here, yeah, what's it called? A square? Here. <laughs> yeah. Sphere. <laughs> um, I didn't G -A -R. have. G A R. No, the the grid icon in the top left here that I'm um, hovering yeah. over. Yeah, the grid. I didn't find the other uh, uh, things yet, but it could be that the domain wasn't verified yet, because pretty much later I got a um, a bounce back from an email that I sent. Um, which I, so and I didn't get back to it. So yeah, so maybe it's there now. Um, and just so you kind of have an idea of what those look like, let me go to Word Online. Um, so I just click, you just click on the Word Online app. It looks very very similar to uh, Office 2013 and 2016. Um, you have your, you know, your templates. You can make a new blank document. Any recent documents that you are working on that are in the cloud, um, either in OneDrive or in SharePoint, are going to be listed here. And then you can also um, browse your, your OneDrive for Business here to uh, open up any documents that are in there. And from within SharePoint, yeah. if you click on a document, it will just open right up into the online uh, version with the option to either edit it in the online version or in the um, the local version. Mm -hmm. So if I cool, click cool. here, I have the option to add open in Word Online or open in Word, um, which is the desktop. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. They, they're pretty good yeah. about making sure you can edit your files wherever you are. Okay. Awesome. Well, we now hit time. Um, I'm really grateful for the two of you for joining us today, and for Ben as well for like showing up in his office early and uh, making all this happen with us. Um, we are going to do it all again, same time tomorrow morning. Um, uh, it'll be a repeat, so you guys shouldn't show up. <laughs> but yeah, definitely know <laughs> <I> that, <wouldn't. laughs> that through the course of this process, you do have access to to for to Ben for some of your other questions um, that are a bit more technical and are definitely outside of my domain expertise. Um, so yeah, so for the next month basically you can harass him with other questions <laughs> and he will, as his time <laughs> allows, get back to you. Very cordially. Wonderful. <laughs> thank you so much. Thanks, guys. Awesome. All the best to you. Um, so thank you so much, and if you have any other follow-up questions, email me, and I will do my best to answer them or direct you to the right people. All right. Thanks so much. All right. Eli. Well, I'll Bye. catch you all soon. Thanks so much, Eli. Have a good one. Pleasure. Bye, Eli. Okay. See ya. Bye. Bye-bye.